Christian artists have just won an appeal and will not have to make invitations for a gay wedding. It's a really interesting case because it kind of follows the, the story of the baker in Colorado. The general ruling that these individuals can't be forced to speak, and it's very similar once again to the cake. We got to talk about the nuance and the complexity of these stories. A lot of people don't seem to understand that in Colorado, the case of the baker when he didn't want to make a cake for a gay wedding, wasn't that he was refusing service to the gay couple, but that he was refusing a specific message that essentially said, I'll make you any cake you want. You can have whatever, but I won't write that message. And that's what we're seeing now. This is in Phoenix. And this is really interesting. This is why we have courts. Phoenix has a law in the city, not the state, and there's not one federally, that says you can't discriminate against someone based on their sexuality or identity. However, The court has ruled, and we'll read the story to get the finer details, that you can't force someone to speak. And that is the crux of the argument. Not that they're they're telling people they're turning them away for their, you know, for for being gay or anything like that, but they're saying, I will not write this message. It's an interesting, it, it is an interesting conundrum. I believe that if you are using public services paid for by the public, you should participate in public. But I also recognize this is very specific, making someone write something. I had an interesting conversation with Glenn Beck about this, where I said, maybe just don't consider this message yours. It's their message. You're simply writing something. And Glenn Beck's response was, you can't force something, someone to do something that is outside of their being. And it's really interesting, too, because I, I certainly do respect the religious argument. And I think a lot of people on the left don't seem to understand this. You're talking about telling someone to engage in what may result in eternal damnation, and that is something they can't within their being do. So it's not an issue of saying, you can't have our invitations, you can't have a cake, but that I will not write this. And I got to admit, it butts heads with the First Amendment, freedom of religion and the press, which is why the courts are saying, you win to the, to the artist. Let's read the story from Newsweek. Before we get started, however, Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address, but the best thing you can do is share this video. I'm willing to bet this video will be deranked for a lot of reasons. The story is quite controversial, but hey, if you think I do a good job, then share this video because it's the only way I'll get past, you know, YouTube's deranking and algorithmic challenges. They can't stop you from sharing if you like it. Let's read. Outrage. After court says wedding invitation makers can refuse gay couples, quote, a license to discriminate from Newsweek. A court ruled Monday that a 2013 anti-discrimination ordinance in Phoenix, Arizona, violated the First Amendment rights of the owners of a calligraphy invitation business who refused to create invitations for same-sex weddings. In a four to three ruling, wow, it's close. The Arizona Supreme Court deemed that graphic designers Joanna Duca and Brianna Kosky who both identify as Christian, were within their rights to insist on only creating invitations for heterosexual weddings. In the decision, the court dictated that the city cannot apply its 2013 human relations ordinance to force them to, quote, create custom wedding invitations celebrating same-sex wedding ceremonies in violation of their sincerely held religious beliefs. Duca and Koski's beliefs about same-sex marriage may seem old-fashioned or even offensive to some, the decision read, in part. But the guarantees of free speech and freedom of religion are not only for those who are deemed sufficiently enlightened, advanced, or progressive. They are for everyone. The rights of free speech and free exercise, so precious to this nation since its founding, are not limited to soft murmurings behind the doors of a person's home or church or private conversations with like-minded friends and family, wrote Justice Andrew Gold in the majority opinion. These guarantees protect the right of every American to express their beliefs in public, this includes the right to create and sell words, paintings, and art that expresses a per- that express a person's sincere religious beliefs. While Phoenix's Human Relations Ordinance includes orientation and gender identity as protected classes, neither the state law nor federal law do. I actually think this is what, well, first, this is what judges are for, okay? They interpret the law, try to be fair. And you may not always agree with their decisions. It's difficult. But I think there's a really interesting point that needs to be brought up. Things aren't, don't exist in a vacuum. This is not an instance of the only wedding invitation business in existence denying service. If we were talking about, you know, the entirety of wedding invitations were dominated by one major corporation and they were discriminating against people, I believe that would be a violation. However, 
When we're talking about small businesses and single individuals, things are much more complicated. This is what courts do. If you're looking at the story, the judge can simply say, in the interest of public fairness, there are other services for wedding invitations. You could order them online from anywhere in the country. You don't need to tell this, you know, these two people to do this, in which case there is an abundance of market competition. You are not being discriminated against. It is complicated, however, because what if, well, actually, actually, no, I mean, it, it, it is complicated because you're asking someone to write something. You know, it's, it's different from if someone, if they walked into the business and they said, get out right now, we won't talk to you. Or more importantly, if it was a restaurant where the public accommodation was seating and arranging and, and providing food and sustenance and just like a general product that goes to everybody. As long as the artists are willing to provide blank invitations, then they're providing the base level of service. It is complicated though. And I think we need to understand when we're talking about issues like this, businesses are different. Not everything is the same thing. You could get a wedding cake that was made like any other wedding cake, or you can get a cake with nothing on top and do the, do the, the light decoration yourself, or you could go to a different bakery. Now, I, I tend to lean more on the progressive side of things that I wouldn't personally ascribe, I wouldn't personally say that Duca and Costco's, you know, the invitations they create are their speech. It's the speech of the couple, and they're just simply drawing lines. But I do understand the argument at having a good conversation with Glenn Beck. I couldn't imagine someone forcing me to make a video where I espouse the views of someone I find detestable. Could you imagine if they said, if, if you had like a video production service and someone said, I want you to espouse like, you know, this scripture or actually there's a really good example in which I think it was Steven Crowder went to Muslim bakeries and wanted gay wedding cakes and they denied him. And this doesn't make it to the mainstream. This is why I think a lot of this is overtly political. Since that, that lawsuit in Colorado, they've continually gone to this guy, you know, other people, and tried to get him to, you know, make a, a transgender coming out cake and things like that, to which he's refused. It seems more like they're targeting someone for their religious beliefs. And the conversation's interesting and complicated. Um, you, you can tell right now I'm not having a very strong opinion on the matter because I recognize the nuance and the complication they can go to a different wedding uh, invitation maker. If it was something like Twitter, where there's literally only one thing that's different, the point is we have to consider scale and market competition when we're talking about a lot of these issues. If it was the case that every single wedding invitation business refused service, we'd have a serious problem. I don't know what the solution is because weddings, you know, wedding invitation services aren't a singular organization. But looking back to the civil rights era, we, we can see the problem if this gets out of control. You ended up with people who, you know, minorities, color, uh, uh, people of color or uh, black people being told they couldn't go to certain restaurants or they couldn't use certain water fountains. It was overt segregation. So we passed a law saying, no, you have to do this now. That's the challenge. If we do nothing in these circumstances, do we end up with one business for one group of people? I don't like that idea. It's one of the reasons I probably side more on the progressive side of things. I don't, uh, well, actually, no, I take that back. In terms of this argument, it is confusing and complicated. I don't want to see a society that is fractured where you have left-wing businesses and right-wing businesses. And this could contribute to that. So could moralistic outrage. But I think about this in almost the same terms as I think about the social justice crowd. What would happen if you went to a very, like, you know, LGBTQ friendly or like literally a bakery that was hosted and supported by the LGB LGBTQ people. And you asked them to put a message on a cake or an invitation that was a passage from the Bible that it was overtly anti LGBTQ. What if they denied that? W they would probably win on the same grounds. So I, I, I guess instead of just ranting over and over again and trying to suss out the situation, I think ultimately we have to consider a few things. Courts, exist to interpret the law and figure out what is fair and what isn't. In this instance, the court has, the court has sided with the couple, much like the Colorado bakery. We're going to see a clash. We're going to see a clash with religion and speech and, and ideology. The social justice ideology does not support religion. In fact, when I was talking to David Pakman, he said he doesn't think religion should be a protected class. That's an interesting argument. I disagree with him because religion exists. It is part of, you know, a, a person's being. Let's read a little bit. Uh, the, the HRC responded. So I'll just read this. They say, 
HRC, a leading LGBT lobbying group, insisted the ruling gave Arizona businesses a license to discriminate only in the capacity that you're asking for a customization. When it comes to these invitations, they're all custom. Today's decision could also open the door for discrimination against other communities protected by the ordinance, including religious minorities and women. That's absolutely right. It could. And I wouldn't expect, you know, a, a, gay, a, a gay bakery, a LGBT bakery to make a cake writing on top, you know, some Leviticus passage that condemns their, their light, their, them, it condemns the bakers. You know what I mean? In which case, all I can really say is there is a simple solution to non-monopoly enterprise when you, when someone tells you they won't do something, just, just go somewhere else. The only reason I, I can see though for a lawsuit is for an ideological win. If I went to a, a bakery and I said, we're not going to serve you for this, that, or this reason, I wouldn't file a lawsuit. I would just go to a different bakery. I'd go to a different you know, invitation uh, maker. So I think what we're seeing is it was an intentional attack on the, the individuals and challenging the court system. Well, the courts initially cited against them. The appeals cited for them. There was actually, I, I did cover this story before because they were saying they were threatened with jail time. Which is, which is interesting. So look, far be it from me to be anything but a milquetoast fence sitter. I can't tell you what the, you know, what, how we should or shouldn't function on, on this, in this capacity. But I can say scale. Consider scale. If it's a small business, you're probably going to lose. If it's a monopoly, you're probably going to win. I think that makes sense. But I'll leave it there because I'm, you know, it's a delicate situation. Next segment will be coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. Stick around and I will see you there. It is a different channel.